Wow, what a great event. Isn't it fabulous to be in a place where musicians learn as well as artists, so you can enjoy their performances? Thank you, musicians. Yeah, for me, you know, it's pretty amazing to get this honor because um, I studied um, in London, graduating in 1965, and at that time they didn't give degrees, so we just worked really hard to get our stuff together for our end of year show, and then they gave us a bit of paper and we went off to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> so to have uh, an honorary doctorate seems just great, thank you! <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about change. Um, everything is going to change. It changes faster and faster all the time. Um, so, you're going out into the world and you're going to have to expect things to be different, not just between today and tomorrow but also probably a year from now or two years from now. Um, the thing that's great about that is that you as creative people are so well equipped to deal with that change because the creative element of your life means that you're able to think of new things, come up with new ideas using the power of your learning by doing as well as your learning by thinking. Uh, using the power of your ability to have a new concept, have an aha moment, uh, to remember that it's possible to do really anything if you think about it and you believe in your intuition and you use that. So as the change comes at you, I think you are the people who are going to be best equipped to handle it. So congratulations for that. I want to tell you a little personal story about a moment um, in life when change happened to me in a rather dramatic way. Um, I was lucky enough to have the chance to design the first laptop. You saw a picture of it a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> the company was actually started by a guy called John Ellenby. And uh, he was uh, working at Xerox Park at the time. And then he had a conversation with a gentleman in the White House, always kept secret, job very secret. And this guy had this huge desk behind him, which was full of computing equipment. It was an enormous computer the size of a large desk. And he said, what I need in my job is to take everything that that computer does and to be able to put it into half my briefcase so I can take it with me. So that became the brief for our project. And we started working on that with an amazing little new start company, a team of people. I found a great engineer to work with me. I did the industrial design. They had people doing the new hardware and making everything smaller. It was really amazingly exciting. And I felt really proud. I'd been practicing design for 15 years by then. I felt you know, that my skill was sort of well-developed. Um, and I got into doing all the details of the physical form. We made the enclosure out of magnesium, so it would be very robust. And we made, uh, were able to incorporate a new graphic display, um, which uh, was unusual, or hadn't, wasn't there at the time. Um, you know, this was before the IBM PC. It was four years before the Macintosh computer, so it was pretty early. Um, and we managed to do all these new things. So, after about a year and a bit working on this thing as my major project, I was given the first prototype, it was number 11 actually, to take home to use myself. And I was tremendously excited and also really proud. So I took this thing home and I plugged it in, and I opened the screen and started work. And the terrible thing happened because, you know, for those first five minutes I was really proud of all the work I'd done and I was thinking about how I designed the latches and the hinge and the way everything was physically. But I felt myself being sucked down into this strange world, the other side of the screen, where everything was in the software and my interactions, my pleasures, my frustrations, everything that was important was in that virtual world. And so I thought, hey, you know, what's the matter here? 
I mean, I spent a year and a quarter designing this thing, and I only get to enjoy it for five minutes. And the rest of the day is spent thinking about how to interact with the virtual technology. So, something has to change. And the idea that that proved to me was that I had to change, instead of just doing physical design, I had to learn how to design in the digital world, how to do interaction design. And it was uh, a really great moment of change. And I think welcoming that kind of change into your lives in the future will be something that will be very important both to recognize, but also to be able to act on. And I think you'll be brilliant at acting on it. So congratulations for that. I also see design expanding. You know, there's a sort of recognition that design is much broader than the skills that we have as professionals. And it's great that we know how to do the design better than everybody else. Um, but there are design elements that are being recognized as having value both sides of our skills, really. I mean, the design awareness, which helps people to choose things. Everybody designs their life in a sense that they choose clothes and um, they arrange the rooms that they live in, they think of their yard, etc. So people are making design decisions in their lives. And the more we can raise the level of that awareness, then the more recognition, I think, there will be for the professionals. You certainly saw that with the desktop revolution for desktop printing. We're seeing that with video and so on now, aren't we? Um, so the idea of awareness helping us as professionals to be recognized um, and artists to be seen as contributing important creative ideas, those things are, are, are helped by this awareness. But on the other side, um, beyond the skills, there is this interest in the last decade for what they call design thinking or uh, interdisciplinary teams. And I know in the uh, MID program here, there's a lot of people working with that kind of collaboration. So, yeah. So for those of us who uh, want to not just design, but also interested in working uh, with other people from different backgrounds, there's a greatly increased recognition of the value of bringing the design processes that we're good at and letting other people use them, not just designers. And so those interdisciplinary teams from people from lots of different backgrounds finding themselves able to solve much more challenging problems than they could before that sort of collaboration was acknowledged and that sort of skill developed. And I see design changing as well in terms of the context in which it's operating. You know, I was um, trained as an industrial designer and I really thought for many years that I was here to help design everyday things, whether it was on the virtual side or the physical side, but it was the thing that I was expecting to help create. And then um, we realized that there's a more holistic view now that everything's connected together so much more. And we think more of people in terms of health and well-being, being able to contribute a solution which has things in it, of course, but also thinks more holistically about the opportunity to design something to make us better off in a holistic way as people in the world. And similarly, I think with architecture or the built environment, you know, architects and interior designers planners, people who think of designing and helping our built environment, thought of themselves as doing places where people exist until um, recently, and they still do indeed, but you add the idea of social innovation, of being able to think of the way society works through those places and can improve the way it enjoys being in that world. So the expansion is from uh, architecture and, th and places to uh, social innovation and the way we do things together um, as a society. And then I think at the sustainable level is the same sort of idea that we used to think mostly about materials for sustainability or perhaps recycling or design for disassembly, that kind of thing. And now the idea of needing to be holistically connected, looking at the world in terms of its connectivity as a single planet is become recognized. And we can make contributions as designers to helping that future of the planet in a holistic way. So I think you, as you graduate, are going to go out into the world with the expansion of these possible contexts, with the opportunity, if you're on the art and performance side of the creative businesses, to influence people's thinking in the way they feel emotionally about the lives in the future, and that you're going to 
um, have a fantastic opportunity to change the world for the better. And thank you for that. And best of luck with it. Yeah.